Oh hi guys and girls in my game. Um basically welcome back to the spare room. I've got this camera going and this is just basically it's a it's a bit of a a test I guess to make sure everything's right before I head out to Grafton with this camera this weekend to to make sure everything works. So if we can get ten minutes filming out of this and uploaded and all that sort of stuff we'll be pretty happy. Um this little engine, you've probably seen it on my live stream, you've seen it on Facebook, social media and stuff, probably on Discord. It's a lot of a mess, it's all in bits, and, and looking at this bunch of bits, it's very difficult to work out exactly what it is. But it is a weir or a, or a donkey pump or a, a flywheel pump for a... I believe some sort of Bayer Peacock locomotive that was manufactured before about 1860 which narrows it down to about three classes of locomotives I think in Australia none of which are out past Longreach whereas this engine was reputed to be found working on a wall press so whether we put it back to original as a, a wheel or a donkey pump which is a bit more of a job or whether we put it back as a, as a little stationary steam engine uh, which is probably yeah it's still a bit of a job we don't know yet but let's have a bit of a look and see what actually needs to be done and what sort of a mess we've got and what needs work and, and what we're going to do and what the plan forward is it's not a project we're starting at this moment the opportunity was there and we actually just Basically, we just, I took, took the opportunity and it can go away somewhere and, and at some point in the future we can get under it and get it going. But, don't know when. Now, it's got yoke and it's fairly compact and there's not a lot of wear in the, in the reciprocating parts, which is also excellent because of the way it's designed. There probably wasn't a lot of wear in the steam engine parts either, except that someone's left it in the puddle for many years. So let's have a bit of a look at it. The bit of wood's got nothing to do with it. Um, it's a diagram for something. I should give it back to the guy who lent me the bit of wood because he probably needs that. There's two bolts and a couple of columns over there in the back. Let's have a bit of a look at this. This space here goes this way up and it's got room for five holes in it. And it's got, if you have a look, it's got grooves on down the back here. Oh, or spaces to give it a bit of clearance to come out of the mould. This is quite a clever idea. It's got these spacer pieces on here, these bars, with a taper on them. And that means that this, this face here can be can have a bit of draft on it to come out of the mould, and it still sits up nice and level, which is sort of clever, actually. It's one of the one of the things you notice with this engine, which is very Victorian, it's 1856, 1860, something like that. And it's this big car space with these two big bosses. Like this. Now And they have basically machine surfaces in here for the the, the buckle, I guess, for the, the Scotch yoke to go in here and slides up and down. And these two big bolts here, there's two bolts, one of them is supporting it. You know, but I don't think these have, I think they've been modified or fixed or repaired or broken or something. They're probably shortened up and 
and welded with two threads on them or something like that. But they go through these columns and then the piston or the cylinder sits on top of that. Now, as far as I can see, that sits that way on with the, with the valve chest facing out. On top, on this side's exhaust, which, uh, if the engine was built to BD Payton, that probably went back through a condenser. Um, BD Payton tank engines use this engine or a similar engine to this. Um, probably without the big cast base on it. There's probably a little well pump that actually bolted on the foot plate, I think. I'm not sure how that worked, but just looking at pictures. Um, but probably on this engine, it just went to the exhaust. So there's a flange here with your exhaust. This has got a piston inside that's... I don't know, we should just probably have a look at how it goes together and then we'll have a look and see what's wrong with it. There's... The valve chest goes on here and a D-valve and there's a slipper block goes in here that slides backwards and forwards. Uh, that's in a tin of cast iron. I'm not going to get it out to show you because it's pretty messy and we're going to end up with oil all over the nice bed clean bed of the van where at Shannon Dale I'm going to have to sleep in here so I'm not really well I'm not feeling like dragging my mattress out here in a nice oily oily van liner so sorry I'm not going to show you that but that goes in there and then this crank pin here this piece here and we're not going to hold this up here but you'll have to imagine this this flywheel, these four bolts here, and this crank pin goes through this D here into the in the pin, and then the four bolts bolt on here. So basically, this D valve is driven by this eccentric here, um, which is the only bit that's not stuck. And the bearings on the crank, one, one bearing is actually, which is interesting, one bearing is actually the, the face of this, this actual crank into the casting here. There's cast iron on, on steel on cast iron, there's no wear at all in that by the look of it, it's going to be fantastic because fixing that would be a big job. Oh crap, jeez this is heavy. It shouldn't be as heavy as it looks. Hang on, we're going to put it back up in the bed. So this goes this way up, and this this eccentric inside here actually operates the valve. Um, there's a spacer of some sort there, and there's an actual a couple of oil holes there. Um, you can see that one on the inside of the or out, the outside of the bearing face there, and one on that side there. This spacer ring here does something else. I'm not sure about that. Till we pull it off. But this crankshaft may have had a bit welded on it or it may have been modified or it may... I'm honestly not sure what has happened here. But as a steam pump, I believe that this crank didn't hang out past the flywheel and I don't think it's particularly good for it to do so and drive something because it's going to wear your, your bearings out. So whether we actually do a job and slice that off there and pull the climber off and use a short crank or, or what we're going to do, I'm not sure about that. Um, this has got some interesting features. Oh my gosh. In that this flywheel has been cored around the rim so this is hollow by cord i mean it's had a sand core where it's been cast uh, which seems like a lot of messing around but it makes you a nice clean flywheel with no balance weights or anything on it 
because one section here which is opposite the crank pin has no core in it so just a short section there so it's weighted on that side opposite the crank pin to balance the engine which is quite smart but it's interesting to note that that this is actually hollow between here and here between here and here and all the way around so interesting way of doing things the victorians didn't skimp on dollars apparently not like the edwardians when they built the fowler roller which is all over the show um these have got keys on here that actually fit actually they don't they do actually this is in the wrong way around that key on here keys on here and these are actually when i put this up together i've, I've assembled it the wrong way around um there's a crank pin that operates on the the, the slide block which runs across the buckle that's one of the the interesting things that, that this has got is a hollow flywheel now these bits this is the original slide uh, valve box basically it's been filled up with body filler and a coat of paint or epoxy or something on it and probably a lot of that could be drilled or knocked out of it to show exactly what it looks like but this is where the D valve goes inside there. Um, I believe. Can't see anything there. But I believe that in one spot here and probably in the top, there should be a valve box. Oh, there should be a, an intake. Um, to the D valve and then that sits on there on those studs there one of them's broken so we're going to need new studs and that's another interesting feature and it's something that we're going to need but before we get to the studs this poor valve chest is no good and it's been blocked up for a reason and the reason is that the previous gentleman who owned it has got a new one cast so it's basically just a matter of doing a job with a fettling this up and drilling it through and facing the edge of it and putting an intake on it this is not a difficult job at all machine in this casting there's an intake hole um which is either on the end here or it's in here i'm not sure where it is there's a hole here and two studs for a gland the gland's actually in the box the brass gland's still there for the rod that goes through and for the and the buckle for the for the d-valve which is this piece so there's a buckle which needs probably remaking because this is just ugly and a d-valve which is probably all right so that goes that way up slides in and out with a gland on here with two nuts and that sets your timing take over here so your timing and your cut off here so that's one job that's already done. The cylinder head hasn't been done. If we have a look at that. We've got this casting here, which is ugly. It's obviously had a piece broken out of it here or it's been dropped or something smashed or a boss has smashed out of here, I think. And I believe there's a boss here for a mechanical lubricator on top here. I'm not sure how well that worked, but that's what it had. Um, someone's covered this made a plate don't think that was a particularly good job but it's been cut out with a hot chisel and by a blacksmith I reckon 
and three holes drilled in it to match that and three holes tapped in the, the lid so this is an original it would probably work at a pinch but it's a bit ugly this I think had a boss in the top here for a lubricator and this brings us to another interesting design feature is these these studs have a close look at these um, they've got a square corner on them or they've got they're round except for one side which has been left square and not sure why that was it seems a bit strange um, I guess it's probably to stop the studs from coming out which is great but a lot more messing around to assemble it a lot more messing around to make it and a lot more expense involved in making something like that because the holes have got exactly the same spot on them or size they've, they've been slotted out and they fit here like that and we've got the studs um, half inch studs with five eight teardrops in the middle that um, actually actually line up with all these holes which are all pointed the same way around here and I guess it's better than wiring them up and, and stopping them coming undone that way because that may have been what they thought was required but um, basically this cylinder head will take this one out because it won't go through there without lining it up with a lot of messing around this cylinder head basically bolts on there and there should be a boss in here for a displacement lubricator or a tallow trap or or whatever it had um, for steam lubrication in 1856 probably there was a, a displacement style lubricator with a lid on it or, or an extra valve on top to, to drain oil down in and then the steam displaced the cylinder lube or the oil with with water as it got hot and then you, you open when you open the bottom valve and close the top valve um, then you open both valves and blow it out and um, or drain it off with another it's that sort of style thing um, displacement lubricator so that's sort of the features there's a couple of nuts that go on here neither of which are the same and there's been a nut on top of this cylinder we'll have a look at that in a minute on top of this piston and these bolts come up through here it's the inch and an eighth Whitworth or something like that inch and a quarter Whitworth the long bolts come up through this column and they've got a nut on the top and at this point they had washers on the bottom but someone's chopped the two of the nuts off to get it apart so we're going to need to either weld some pieces on these rods which is probably the easiest way to do it is to chuck them up and machine a boss on them and fit another piece on them and run a weld around them and thread them or we're going to have to make new ones and that seems like a big job but it probably isn't because you could just make them up with a thread on each end and a washer and pin will tack the washer which holds think I'm not sure actually but I believe this washer probably bolts yeah not sure about that um, still looking for information on that so back to this and, and what needs to be done and what 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 the main where it's actually shagged out. Remember that this engine is 170 years old. Um, it's 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 pushing. It's 163, 167 years or something since this was built. I think, net best guess. So it needs a bit of work. And the reason that I picked it up is because it is kind of unique. There's not too many 1860s engines anywhere 1850s engines anywhere in in Australia even in the world there's not too many engines this age 
and yes it's going to need some work because this cylinder has been sitting in a puddle I think for quite some time or it's had the top off and it's been full of water or something like that don't know what it's had but this is definitely your exhaust because the middle you can see I poke my finger in there you can see see my finger poke through so that's your exhaust no spiders apparently so exhaust ports are all right this one here um, it's got a port through here and it's got a port have a look down into the other part so this port here comes out here just below the the line on the the cylinder which would sit to half inch down uh, there would have been a nut on here i believe this to be probably a two-piece piston that would be the most logical thing with a piston ring in between so this has got to come off uh, this bore here is basically terrible it's got a pits in here you can put your finger in it might clean up if you got it out um, absolutely if we got it out and had to make a new piston it might clean up nicely um, gentleman provided a cast iron sleeve there that we could put in it too because that's probably a smart thing to do is to bore this out put that put that sleeve in with a bit of with the flange on top bore this out and fit the flange and push it in have the top cap hold it in place and that would be a really good repair and give us some nice cast iron back in there so that's that's on the go there um, this rod is caught in this bottom cylinder this rod is caught in this bottom cylinder cap or the, the 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 bottom cover which is quite a thick piece with the same studs only longer studs um, and a hole for a gland now the gland goes back up in there so it can only really be caught on the cover basically on this half inch that it extrudes down into the or, or pushes down into the cylinder or up into the cylinder on this hand and it's probably caught on about half inch here or a bit more where the where the actual rod goes through the cylinder cover and to be honest it's probably not even tight there so most likely it's just on the cover here that is stuck so that's that's a bit of a bit of a job there gonna need to make some more of these studs these are probably not too bad these four this one's got a bend in it this one's not this one's broken these three are all right so make a new one of them these are a mess like they're, they're a real mess they've been hammered and bashed and, and, and smacked around for so hard that I think we need to make six of these if we can get these six off the bottom all right and clean the threads up we'd be pretty happy with that Um, we've got four bolts to go through here all those bits we've got to machine that up and make a new carver for the top we've got to make a new basically a new bridle or a new a new buckle for the for the valve because this is broken here it's just snapped off and it's basically a matter of machining it out of solid and putting a rod on it. We need a new rod anyway because someone's chopped that off there to get it out, which is a bit of a pity, really. But we've got to make a new rod for that. Um, the crank should be all right. The, the thing is um, that the bottom half of this engine, which is the pump, is, is completely missing. And I imagine when this was installed on the wool press in northern Queensland or outback Queensland um, which is a long way from probably Victoria or even Sydney where this original engine would have run um, unless there was a private company bought actual Bayer Peacock engines that period of time in Australia and I haven't found that information yet but if anyone knows anything about that, that'd be awesome. And
please drop us a line or, or get a comment because I, I really would like to hear. Um, but when that was... The, the the last possible date was probably the the Victorian P class had this you know, this this engine and they or or this this donkey pump, and the P class was scrapped by 1916. Um, I believe they were rebuilt before then because this thing spinning this flywheel spinning on the platform side of the locomotive, um, while it stopped at stations, uh, it was probably a bit of a health hazard, and also. Uh, if you needed a bit more water as the safety valve blew off or something like that you had to crawl out beside the safety valve and give the flywheel a spin to get the thing going or stop and and, and start the pump so I'm guessing that it was a bit of a treacherous thing to run and I don't think that they survived all that long on very many locomotives. There is a Swedish locomotive. Um, that still exists with this pump on it in Sweden. It's 1856 called Prince August. You probably are, I will put a couple of shorts in here of this. Um, that still has this pump on it. But the last possible place, or the latest possible date that it could have come off the locomotive and been shipped to Queensland to go on a wall press would have been 1916. And at that point, I believed that the pump, which was probably brass underneath, um, was scrapped. And that would have had these two studs would have screwed into that. And then it probably had another eccentric on the back and I'm not sure how that worked or or why that worked or or what was involved in that but we need a drawing to find out uh, I don't believe that this was ever sold as just as a stationary engine or as a, a donkey engine because because the plates that are underneath this are, are really ugly the ones that hold it all together um, they look like they're much like this cover here. It's been done by a blacksmith. And yeah, very similar sort of thing to that. With a rough hole in them. And they're just steel plate that's been destroyed. They're just basically steel plate that's been whacked off with a chisel and, and, a, and a hole made in it and that's what did the job it's not even in the center it's done by a blacksmith somewhere so i don't think that's original i think it probably was a locomotive pump but how the pump connects up it, it sort of is a mystery but i believe that the piston for the pump should have been in here and it was probably just a little single cylinder pump um, this is only three and three and five eight bore so I don't imagine that this pump was much bigger than that. It, a high pressure pump, it might have been a three inch bore, something like that, at the outside. So don't know what that was. When I first saw it, the most logical thing for a Scotch yoke engine is that it would have pumped through here, but there's no actual connection here. So maybe it didn't, I don't know. Information would be wonderful. Anyone knows anything, knows that of another application for an, for an engine that basically looks like it's been bolted on some on a big boiler somewhere, or on a locomotive boiler, and is piece for piece in the top half the same as a Bayer Peacock engine, and also had Bayer Peacock stamped in the on the um, the old old slow valve cap box. Bay of Peacock would have been used for some other reason, I'm not sure. This long crankshaft threw me a bit. Seems strange that I don't think that's factory. Um, not sure, I reckon someone at some point has 
welded a bit on and machined it up or done a job of welding it properly. Um, the gear is not original, I don't think. And I believe that this crankshaft on this side should be like, level with the edge of the, the flywheel. And something inside or somewhere would have operated a pump. Whether there was another slide in the back, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I really don't know how that operated. Um, most likely thing is that there was an eccentric or a, an eccentric to run the pump or something like that somewhere. Don't know where. It could easily have been not where this goes here. This, this cover here could be the old eccentric. Um, doesn't seem to be off center at all but that could have been where the eccentric went and that is in behind here but I can't see that on any of the pictures either anyway enough shaky handheld camera work thanks for watching um, I just wanted before I unload this down at Shenandoah to make a video and this has got longer than I expected so I'll get this uploaded tonight before I go and um, yeah we've had a bit of a look at that so i'm out um we'll try and keep making some videos there might be some more live steam videos there might be some miniature engineering videos as well um might be some i might be persuaded to do a shop tour at some point and um be kind to each other i'm out thanks